I was once in a game where the dungeon master had thousands of dollars worth of Dwarven Forge terrain and miniatures. They had a large room dedicated to housing all their D&D and RPG gear and playing the game. It was an amazing setup and the terrain and miniatures were absolutely gorgeous. I was very impressed. And then we actually played the game. Yeah, yeah no longer impressed. Here's the thing, investing hundreds or thousands of dollars in fancy terrain because your favorite D&D show sponsored it once or twice and got you all hyped up will not make you a good game master. Backing every single Reaper Bones Kickstarter and then painting minis until your fingers bleed will not make you a good game master. And the converse is true as well. Spurning physical terrain and minis, lifting your head snobbishly high and proclaiming, in my group, we use theater of the mind because our imaginations are good enough will also not make you a good game master. The fact is that terrain and minis can often fall short at the game table and not be the best option. And the same is true for theater of the mind. You see, terrain and minis and theater of the mind are all just tools that a game master has at their disposal. And like any tool, these tools have their time and place, their advantages and disadvantages. Today, we're gonna to talk about the best times to use each and how to strike a balance between using terrain and minis and theater of the mind because doing this will help you improve as a game master. Now being a dungeon master isn't always easy. Not only do you need to run the game at the table, but you also need to prepare the adventures, traps, puzzles, NPCs, and other game elements in advance. Would you like to shortcut just a wee bit of that prep work from time to time? With Layer Magazine, you can. All DM Layer patrons receive a new issue of Layer Magazine every month that contains a plethora of game master resources to help you reduce your your prep time and run awesome games. For instance, Layer Magazine contains 100% compatible 5th edition adventures designed to be fast to prepare before the game and easy to reference during the game. And each adventure comes with maps designed for use on virtual tabletops. Become a DM Layer patron today at the link below and not only will you get Layer Magazine, but loads of extra perks such as hanging out with me on Zoom and playing in D&D games with me. When to use terrain and minis. And a quick note here, when you're playing on online, a virtual tabletop such as Fantasy Grounds is the equivalent of terrain and minis. So all of these points apply to VTTs as well. Number one, when you want to have a complex tactical battle. For combats that feature multiple enemies, elevations, interesting terrain, and where you'd like the players to be able to focus on detailed tactics, terrain and minis is the way to go. Nothing beats being able to see precisely where everyone and everything is during the combat. When you want to choose and execute on specific battle tactics. For many groups, this is the reason to use a grid and minis. At its heart, D&D and many other RPGs had their foundations as war games, and many groups feature a strong element of this in their gameplay. And when you're wargaming, being able to see everything on the board is the way to go. Number two, when precise positions really matter. Sometimes you're not in combat, but precise positions in a room or area are are really, really important. My Hand of Light group was once traversing a large cavern covered with traps, all in different areas and squares. So their exact locations in the room where and, and where they stepped was very important. Thus, the best way to play that out at the game table was to draw out the room on a grid, plop their minis down on the board, and have them move their minis about as they navigated that particular death trap. By the way, if you're finding the information in this video helpful or just enjoy staring at my ruggedly handsome face, give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment for the algorithm down below. Let YouTube know that my million dollar makeover doesn't completely suck. Number three, to help players visualize a complex room or area. Words are great. We all love a great narrative description, don't we? However, sometimes our ability to describe a place verbally pales in comparison to the simple effectiveness of drawing out the area on a grid or using terrain to reconstruct it. So when you have a complex area that is better explained visually to your players, some nice terrain or a simple sketch on grid paper will often get the job done much better and faster. 
Number four, when you know the party is going to a specific dungeon or place. It's like an ongoing joke that whatever the game master prepares, the players will ignore and do something completely different, isn't it? Well, this is the last thing you want happening when you've spent an hour or two recreating a dungeon with dwarven forged terrain and spent the weekend constructing a mini swamp out of paper mache, twigs, and plastic baggies. However, however, when you just know deep down in your bones that your players absolutely will go to a specific location where terrain and minis would be just perfect to use. Well, then you spend the time getting it all set up. You might also consider getting them to sign contracts in their own blood, promising not to change their minds. That might be going a step too far. Or is it? Number five, cool factor. Let's face it, Dwarven Forge and well-painted minis look so very, very cool. And we all love drooling over the images of awesome terrain and mini setups we see on Reddit and Facebook and Twitter. There's nothing inherently wrong with doing a thing from time to time just because it's cool. I mean, why do you think the mullet is making a comeback? When to use theater of the mind. Number one, when you want to streamline combat. Here's the thing. When done properly, theater of the mind makes combats go faster. It's true, it's a thing, I've experienced it myself. For years and years, all I ever did really was grid and minis for my game. But then I started running a D&D game at work over our lunch breaks, and I opted for theater of the mind over hauling in all of my minis. And as I got more accustomed to running theater of the mind and discovered a few tricks for doing so, I also discovered that combats were going much faster than when I would run similar combats with a grid and minis. The biggest tip for making this happen is to let go of precision and specifics and embrace estimates and generalities. However, I do plan on doing a future video on running Theater of the Mind and my tips that I've discovered for doing so. Number two, or when the combat is simple and or only involves one or two enemies. Look, not every combat needs to be a tactical work of art. Sometimes a fight is probably just going to be a surround and pound against one or two foes. Or it's against far weaker enemies and the PCs are just going to give them a sound beatdown in short order. These are the sorts of situations where you don't really need to use terrain and minis because you won't really be leveraging any of the benefits of using them. Instead, the combat can be run just using theater of the mind. Number three, when you want to emphasize narrative descriptions and imagination over tactics. Who says that every D&D or RPG combat has to be run as a war game? Who says that battle tactics are an absolute must have for every battle? Sometimes it's a good change of pace to move the focus over to narrative descriptions and imagination and put battle tactics in the backseat. It's also possible that in general, you and your players might not give a flying crap about combat tactics and wargaming, and you'd rather just describe what's going on and use your imaginations to envision combat. Well, in either case, theater of the mind is the ticket for you. Number four, when you don't have time to prepare the terrain or virtual tabletop map in advance. Let's face it, game masters sometimes just don't have the time needed to prepare that beautiful dwarven forge setup that they'd like to use at the game, or the time to create a map using Incarnate or some other online map making tool. Place it into roll 20, add dynamic lighting, and double check that nothing got funky on you, because that happens sometimes. It's just it's roll 20, what are you gonna do? Use something else. <laughs> Someday I'll take my own advice. I choose the path of pain. And then, of course, sometimes random encounters happen that may not have been anticipated. That's why they're called random encounters. Imagine that. But never fear, dear time-pressed, sleep-deprived fellow dungeon master, because theater of the mind has got your back. Number five, when you don't have any terrain or minis. Yeah, because some of us are broke and just don't have the cash to buy all that cool stuff. Or you're traveling to a convention or something where it's difficult to transport terrain and minis. Well, you can always use theater of the mind. It costs nothing and your imagination is easy to take with you. I mean, you usually. Right? By the way, on the topic of conventions, I typically use tactical tokens at the conventions I go to because not only do they look great, but they are super easy to transport and not very expensive. Link down below. Click on the screen now to binge on another fine DM Layer video or to become a DM Layer patron and get an issue of Layer Magazine every month. And until next time, let's play D&D.